guys welcome back to my channel so today I thought I would do just something a little bit different let me start off by saying this is going to be my trigger warning this video has to do with Scientology so if you find this triggering in any way you might as well click off um, also um, to add on to this trigger warning if you are a Scientologist and you want to leave um, baiting questions or hate comments on my video feel free go ahead um, because all you're doing is just adding to the reason why I do these videos so have at it I don't really care um, with that said I'm going to start off with that point um, I do monitor my comment section I don't delete any of my comments left on my comment section I actually engage back with people that leave comments under my videos I'm very active in my comment section so I'm gonna go back um, to uh, this is my comment section right here um, I'm gonna go back to two comments that were left under one of my videos from yesterday uh, one uh, this is under the video Scientology from a Scientologist perspective episode number five um, one was left do you know where Shelly is uh, to which I replied no no one does that is the point of everyone asking questions and drawing attention um, then another one which I found hilarious is I'm out of here I can't understand a word you're saying uh, to which I replied then this was not the video for you thank you for stopping by um, if you have an issue with anything that I'm saying um, Scientology I'm just gonna put that out there uh, maybe you should take a deep dive look into your practices what you're preaching and the things that's going on inside your church because all I've been talking about in my Scientology from a Scientologist perspective are things from your direct website uh, these are things that I'm picking out from your website uh, these are things that you're saying on your website yourself um, and I'm just giving commentary from the things that you're saying so um, if there's a problem there maybe you should look at that yourselves um, but again those are two comments that were left, so apparently I'm ruffling a couple of feathers, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Anyway, now I'm going in a different direction today. I've earmarked quite a few um, different uh, articles. So we're going to go to these articles these are articles about Scientology and we're going to talk about these articles individually um, the first one <laughs> I, I can't make this shit up people so we're going to go to this guy claims to be the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard uh, this comes from www.vice.com and the 31 year old has legally changed his name to Lafayette Ron Hubbard, but the official Church of Scientology isn't buying his story. So let me just see if this will focus. So here we go. Here's a picture of L. Ron Hubbard. Here's a picture of the guy claiming to be the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. Um, in a Skype call a few months back, I asked. L. Ron Hubbard to talk uh, to talk me through his tattoos he said a cross of Scientology here he said gesturing to his right arm and the actual Scientology symbol here gesturing to his left I have an infinity symbol on my forearm which is a cover-up of something else I got in prison when I asked about the infinity symbol a nod to Scientology belief that our souls are infinite is covering up he said let's just say I was a member of a certain prison gang at the time 
he would not specify which. Let's just take a good guess there. This particular L. Ron Hubbard is obviously not the L. Ron Hubbard who wrote sci-fi novels, founded Scientology, and died in 1986. This L. Ron Hubbard is 31 years old, lives in a small town in Washington State, and claims to be the old to be the other L. Ron Hubbard, but in a new body. <laughs> Though this L. Ron Hubbard's driver's license identifies him as Lafayette Ronald Hubbard, it has only done so since 2017. Up until that point, he went by Justin Allen Craig. I'm going to refer to this new, still alive, L. Ron Hubbard as Lafayette, and the deceased one is L. Ron Hubbard, so that, you know, you can keep it together. <laughs> the Church of Scientology says the most that most Scientologists remember past lives. Hubbard himself claimed to have lived previous existence as a British imperialist, a mogul, <laughs> Cecil Rhodes, a tax collector in ancient Rome, and an alien race car driver in a distant <laughs> galactic civilization. I'm sorry, I can't take this seriously. In the late 1960s, his followers were so convinced by his tales of past lives, Hubbard was reportedly able to lead an ex expedition to dig up treasure he'd buried during previous existences. No treasure was found. The church allegedly maintains offices and a mansion for Hubbard to use upon his return, which we've discussed. He has different houses at different places. He has like six different houses across the United States. And he has all of this different stuff that we've talked about in other episodes. So Lafayette says he was the first he was first introduced to Scientology while he was in prison ten years ago, after another inmate gave him a copy of Dianetics, one of the fundamental texts of Scientology. I spent like ten straight hours reading that and went to sleep, got up, read the next day and then ended up reading about eight more times. That prison stint was one of many. There's pretty much nothing I wasn't in prison for. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. Uh, see, except I never admitted to sex offense and I never abused a child. Good for you. You're wonderful. Um, the Scientology watchdog blog, The Underground Bunker, was more specific, reporting that he racked up charges for auto theft, shoplifting, attempted carjacking, battery theft, uh, threatening a public official, and resisting arrest. If his claims of re reincarnation are true, the acts would be the continuation of a crime spree started by L. Ron Hubbard, who was charged with petty theft and fraud, dabbled in bigamy, and was named as an unindicted co-conspirator in one of the largest infiltrations of the United States government. So, I mean, hey, the actual L. Ron Hubbard wasn't such a great guy. This L. Ron Hubbard's not such a great guy. You know I mean, hey, Just saying, they could be the same person. According to Lafayette, at the end of his prison sentence in 2015, he tried to enroll himself in courses at the Church of Scientology in Inglewood, California, but left when he tried to limit the services. Uh, left when they tried to limit the services they would perform for him because of his criminal background. Oh, so they discriminate against criminals. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see here. I just walked off and said, good luck. Hell or high water, I'll do it. My, I'll do this myself, he recalled. Over the next 18 months, he said, he started remembering things from the previous existence. You won't be surprised to learn that Lafayette's claims have been met with skepticism. Hmm. I'm pretty damn skeptical myself. When I emailed the Church of Scientology to see how they 
So see how it felt about Lafayette. Church spokesperson Karen Powell. Hmm. That name's familiar. She likes to write A and E a lot. Wrote back, I have never heard of Mr. Justin Allen Craig. The claims are unhinged and ludicrous. You you could not be serious about running this story, which I would imagine will be extremely awkward if it turns out Lafayette is telling the truth. She did not respond to a question about Lafayette's experience at their Inglewood church, but not all Scientologists are affiliated with the Church of Scientology. They are, there are people who believe in teachings of Scientology, but are various, but for various reasons do not want to associate with the big mega controversial organization that Tom Cruise is a part of. It's within the world of these independent Scientologists that Lafayette has found some support. That's a scary thought. Brian Cox runs a site of Scientopedia. 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 A Scientology resource site aimed at independent Scientologists. Last April, he posted an interview with Lafayette to its YouTube channel. While the video received a lot of negative comments, a con artist saying he's the reincarnation of one of its greatest con artists of all times, it will give the guy credit for its giant nuts. Cox estimated that maybe 33% of the people who commented on the video and accompanying Facebook post seemed to believe Lafayette's story. Cox, who is himself an independent Scientologist, having parted ways with the main church because he felt they were too focused on money. Hmm, imagine that. Somebody who thought they were too focused on money. I've been saying for a while they either worship L. Ron Hubbard or they worship money because nobody else can tell me what the fuck they worship. This guy believes the same thing. He told me he is agnostic about Lafayette's claims. My impression was, and still is, I don't know. <laughs> Even this guy doesn't know where the hell this guy stands. Steve Watkins, an independent Scientologist who lives in the UK, says he also turned away from the main church after becoming frustrated with the amount of money they expected from him. It took me years to save up for courses, and then when I paid, it was as if they were, if they made it harder than it should be, he told me via email, adding that while he can't definitely, he can't definitively say Lafayette is the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard, he thinks his story doesn't seem false. Okay, I'm just going to stop there because this is starting to make my head hurt. Okay, so this guy went from being, okay, he won't say what he was in prison, but I'm going to tell you what he was in prison. He was a white supremacist in prison. He went from being a white supremacist in prison to getting a bunch of Scientology tattoos once he got out of prison to now saying he's the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. He's racked up a bunch of charges, which L. Ron Hubbard racked up a bunch of charges on his own before he died. Now he's running around, he couldn't get services in the mega church, so now he's found a bunch of independent Scientologists. He's trying to get their belief that he's L. Ron Hubbard. A bunch of them are going, well, you know, I don't know. He could be, he couldn't be, I don't know. He's running around saying he's L. Ron Hubbard. He's even changed his name to Lafayette Ronald Hubbard. Trying to say that he's the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. His second date of birth and his mannerisms sort of tie in. He pointed out, which is true, Lafayette was born a year and a half after Hubbard died and speaks with the same mouthful of chewed taffy, old-timey radio voice that L. Ron Hubbard spoke with. He's also the only person I've ever spoken to that used the word Germain. I attempted to listen to a 10-part lecture series that Lafayette made to explain the process, but in true Scientological fashion, 
It was so dense with jargon, I was unable to pick up even the most basic gist of it. Sample quote. In case you're wondering what true static is, the definition of true static would essentially be synonymous with the original definition of static. This is not to get confused with thetan or theta or thought energies. So, I mean, hey, he can bullshit his way through being L. Ron Hubbard. It goes on into saying a lot of different things about how people can kind of see where this guy is coming from. I asked Lafayette what he would say to someone who thought he might be running a scam. He asked me to imagine that in a previous lifetime I had been a brilliant mechanical engineer, but now in this life, I had been born into a sporty family that didn't know anything about my inner engineering genius and instead tried to push me into playing basketball. You're going to feel out of place. You're going to feel foreign. You're going to feel alien. He said, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're good at something, you know, but basketball, it's going to mess with your, it's going to mess with somebody. You're going to be constantly angry, frustrated, maybe even depressed. They're going to feel out of place. They're going to be socially inept because not only that, they're in a whole entire new era than the one they were just familiar with. This feeling, he said, is what caused him to act out in ways that repeatedly landed him in courtrooms and prison cells. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? So before realizing you were L. Ron Hubbard, did you have like a feeling that you were out of place and were maybe very good at something and didn't know what that was? My whole entire lifetime, man, he said, I always had this unsettling feeling of moving towards something. It was just always having a sense of moving towards something like I'm supposed to be doing something. I'm supposed to be doing something great, he continued. So you did a whole bunch of crimes. If you have a feeling that you're supposed to be doing something great, you move towards something great. You don't do a bunch of crimes. That, that, that never gets you towards something great. That gets you into a prison cell. That gets you into time. That gets you away from doing something great. Nothing would ever work out right. Would ever work or go right. And that was just because I was doing. I wasn't doing what I was meant to be doing. And that's what I'm doing now. What are you doing now? All you're doing now is exactly what someone from an ex-convict status does, is you're trying to find the next scam. And he's like the perfect kind of con man for that. Like, he's kind of worked those cons, and so now he's in that, like, I've got the perfect con. I'm the reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard. He's read off the background for it. He's had plenty of time to study the role. And now he's set up perfectly for it. Okay, so the underground bunker is ran by Tony Ortega, who used to be a member of Scientology. And I follow him on Twitter, and that's actually where I got this story from. And I will have all that stuff linked down in the description box down below. Um, he does great about putting out a bunch of stories. Um, if you ever want to read a bunch of interesting stories, he puts out a ton of them. Um, and he is less convinced that Lafayette is not a scammer. <clears throat> he interviewed him and he got Lafayette to refer to Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue Hubbard, as Mary before informing him that Hubbard used to call her Susie. I thought he was pretty mediocre as a performer and that he wasn't very hard for me to sort of get him on his wrong foot. 
As far as Hubbard's performance, said Ortega, Lafayette claims to not remember all the specific details of his previous life. I told Ortega that some of the people I've spoken to felt they'd had good results with Lafayette's auditing techniques. Have you listened to Hubbard's lectures? He asked, referring to the original Hubbard. Have you read the tech? I mean, isn't it's nonsense. Some, so somebody comes along and says he's got a new version of nonsense and that makes him the new L. Ron Hubbard? Okay, fine. So that is the Vice article on the new L. Ron Hubbard, which I will link down in the description box below. So I want to go on to another one that's probably going to get me some hate. I want to rack up the hate today, so let's bring it on. So this is from MSN.com. Man's defense in double murder death penalty case. Can we guess what it is? Scientology made me do it. Okay, so... Here's our guy right here. That's his mugshot right there. And his name is Kenneth Wayne Thomas. And he sits in Yvoki County Courthouse in Pimscott. He's on trial for double murder case. And he stands accused of using a hatchet to bludgeon his sister-in-law and her boyfriend to death and setting the house on fire to destroy any evidence in a bid to escape the death penalty he is trying a novel defense. Scientology made me do it. Kenneth Wayne Thomas is arguing that Scientology turned him, in, turned him violent in March of 2012. But he is saying his belief in the religion of Scientology helps him explain his actions. In particular, he says his devotion to Scientology's tenets led him on a 24-hour plus drive from his home in rural Missouri to the eventual murder scene in Arizona. Prosecutors say that the marathon drive helps show Thomas committed the crime committed the crimes with premeditation and an element of the first degree murder convictions they are seeking. On each of the, on each, the state of Arizona is asking for the death penalty. So they're asking for two death penalties. They want him double dead. <laughs> Thomas's attorneys will argue to the jury that the act it was rational if understood through the lens of Scientology. Oh, let's see where this is going. Thomas felt he needed to rescue a child, a nephew, to his wife because the boy's spiritual well-being was at risk. Neither the boy nor his sister were in the house at the time of the killings. <clears throat> Raising the defense will make the Scientology belief system a part of the court case. Attorneys for Thomas have already subpoenaed records from the Florida-based church. They have also asked for testimony from Scientology experts, including the actress Leah Rimney, who has produced docu document ugh, documentaries critical to the religion. The defense has listed the Scientology tone scale, a chart that purports a diagram of all human emotions among its evidence. Potential jurors were asked their thoughts about the religion. Tom Cruise's name was mentioned during opening arguments. Prosecutors had tried to get the judge to disallow the Scientology defense in a brief filed before the trial, the state said followers of any religion believe the theology of varying degree and would not be clear to what extent Thomas hewed to Scientologies. Prosecutors also warned that a trial risked veering down a Scientology rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, 
we're all veering down a Scientology rabbit hole at this point. Presentation of evidence would have to be preceded by a complex explanation of exactly what Scientology, what, what followers of Scientology believed. At this point, nobody knows. The prosecutors wrote in a March 2018 argument to the court. The superior, the superior court judge, Patricia Trubesky, who was presiding over the proceedings, ruled in January that the Scientology defense would be allowed. So, the role of the religion. <sighs> Here we go. Scientology was developed in the 1950s by L. Ron Hubbard, the science, science fiction writer. The first meetings of Scientologists were held in Hubbard's home at the base of Camelback Mountain in Phoenix. The religion was based on human beings, on humans being able to achieve spiritual growth by walking a set path and reaching particular milestones. Critics of the religion say those milestones come with a hefty price tag that involve buying books and paying for sessions of introspection called auditing. In opening arguments last week in Prescott, Kenneth Thomas's defense attorney Robert Gundacker asked the jury to see the to see the events that led to the killings through the eyes of Thomas, a devoted Scientologist. Thomas became a Scientologist as a child, the attorney said, following his mother's marriage to a devotee. Gundacker told the jury that Thomas had heard that his wife's nephew was undergoing mental health related treatment, which was anathema of his beliefs as a Scientologist. So, there we go. That's the key. Scientologists believe that everything can be healed through your own thing. But if you're going through, like they say on their website, because we covered that before, that you, they, they believe in going to doctors. Or did we cover that before? I don't think we did. I don't think we've covered that. They do have on their website that they do believe in going to doctors. Well, therapists and mental health professionals are covered under doctors. Hold on, guys. My camera's fixing to die. Give me one second. I'm gonna plug it back. Okay, so they do have on their website that they do believe in people going to medical doctors. Well, here's the thing. Therapists and everything are covered under medical doctors. But right here it's saying that they were that his nephew was his wife's nephew was undergoing mental health related treatment which is against Scientology one of the central tenements in it is core to the whole wider system of beliefs is that science that psycho uh, psychology is evil probably the worst evil thing on the planet Gundacker told George Think back to Tom Cruise. Cruise, the movie actor and Scientologist, famously railed against psychology during the interview on NBC's Today Show in 2005, and that is very true. Thompson, as a Scientologist, would have thought that the medication the child was being given subjected him to irreparable harm, his attorney said. In court motions, his defense team has said Thompson thought the child's internal soul was at risk. This is Kenny's mindset, Gundacker said. Once at the home, his attorney argued Thompson acted in the heat of passion and killing the victims, not with a murderous intent. Gundacker asked the jury to eventually return the verdict of manslaughter, not first degree murder. Prosecutors presented a different theory of the case. The deputy county, <clears throat> deputy county attorney, Steve Young, told jurors they would see evidence that showed Thompson's intent, including his marathon drive, his purchases of the hatchet and knife used in the killings, and his attempts to cover his tracks by burning the house and telling false stories to the police. Prosecutors did not mention Scientology at all. <coughs> Psychology is evil and a scam. Gundacker did not dispute the bare facts of the case. At times, it seems as if his argument could be used by the prosecution. <clears throat> Do 
why is that? Because he's wanting it to seem as like, yes, we agree. Yes, he did this. He did this and he did this. But this is why he did it. He did it because Scientology told him that, yes, you do this because this is evil. Psychology is evil. It is an evil thing and you have to do this. Thompson drove from his rural Missouri home to Arizona in a little more than a day. He entered the Prescott, his Prescott Valley home of his sister-in-law and her boyfriend and killed them both using a hatchet and a knife he had purchased that morning. He poured acid over their bodies, used flares and diesel fuel to set the house on fire. He got back on the freeway and headed east toward Missouri. But all of this, Gundacker said, sprang from an innocent motive. Thompson wanted to bring his sister-in-law's two children back home with him. Thompson's wife had cared for their children while their mother was in prison, Gundacker told the jury, and she and Thompson fretted about their fate once they were back in custody of their mother. Kenny Thompson cared so much about his niece and nephew, Gundacker told jurors, jurors that he came all the way from Missouri to get them out of their situation by persuading their mother not by killing their mother. Well, you killed her. That's not persuading. That's murdering. That's two different things. To persuade someone is, hey, you know, I don't agree with this. Maybe the kids should come with me for a little while until you can get settled. Maybe we'll get the kids on the right path. I don't believe this is the right way. No, taking a hatchet and a knife and Stabbing and bludgeoning them, that is murdering someone. That's not exactly very persuasive. Gundacker told jurors that Thompson made the drive on impulse fueled by worry, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Scientologists think psychology is evil and a scam, Gundacker told jurors. They believe psychology does not only not cure people, it causes mental illness. They think psycho psychological medicines are central to its evil. They are part of the scam and they are particularly bad when they are given to children, he said. Okay, so a change of plans, a bloody scene. So, Thompson did not tell his wife about his plans. She thought that he was on his way to Memphis, Tennessee to deal with issues involving his parents' estate. So, she thought he was going to Memphis. He ends up in Arizona. She had no clue what was going on. Uh, let's see here. What happened next, nobody knows. Within an hour, according to the timeline laid out by the opening arguments, both prosecutors and the defense, Dunn and Edwards were dead by the time, you know, like he gets there within an hour, they're both dead. Nobody knows exactly what happened. Edwards' body, they found 22 wounds to the head and neck. Um, some showing evidence of chopping. Her jugular vein was severed. According to court documents, Dunn suffered multiple head wounds caused by something sharp, says the police. Um, Thompson was driving eastbound on I-40 as on his way out of Arizona when he was stopped by a trooper monitoring traffic from the median. Thought there was something unusual about the driver. Um, he would write in his report that Thompson was staring straight ahead with both arms locked out and gripping the steering wheel. He decided to follow behind him on the freeway. And he was driving at the exact speed limit, but the tripper would eventually find a reason to pull him over. And he said that he could smell a, the solvent in the car and spotted a red gas can. So they was acting nervous and his chest was heaving and his hands were shaking. Trooper called for a drug sniffing dog for the car. Dog seemed to hit on something in the trunk. They searched the vehicle. They 
They found blood splatter on his clothes. But he had changed clothes. Here's the thing. The man had changed clothes. Like, so he had enough wherewithal to not only buy, buy the hatchet and knife and the stuff before he got to the home. But after he had killed these people, set fire to the home, he changed his clothes before he left. But he put everything in the trunk. So when they searched the car, they found the fucking bloody clothes and all this stuff. So, they found out. So, he's pretty much shown that he was going on. So, they come down to, was he really practicing? Prosecutors in a pretrial briefing argue that the Scientology defense not be allowed noted there appeared to be no evidence that Thompson was practiced Thompson practiced Scientology at all. Thompson's grandmother, Eva Harvey, said during a phone interview from her Donovan, Missouri home that though Thompson was raised with Scientology from the time that he was about five, he shed the religion as an adult. I don't think he really believed it, she said, Thompson who, until his arrest, lived in a home on the same property as his grandmother and was an occasional church goer, goer, Harvey said. But those services were Baptist, she said. Excuse me. Harvey said she has not been called to testify. So that hasn't come to an, that trial hasn't come to an end yet. But so he's trying to claim that he's using Scientology as defense. They're trying to show, hey, he's not even a prime practicing Scientologist. He can't even use this as a defense. But that's what's going on currently in the world. And why not? Let's go to the Daily Wire and go to the one that I just talked about not too long ago. Scientology goes after planners icon Mr. Peanut for critiquing its Super Bowl ad because I think this is so funny. This year's Super Bowl left something to be desired and the commercials were no exception. But when the well-known leg legume decided to become a Twitter cri critic <laughs> of the Church of Scientology creepy 30-second spot on Sunday, he found himself in more trouble than he anticipated. Planners had its own commercial featuring Alex Rodriguez and Charlie Sheen, but the company's spokes Peanut also appeared on Twitter. And when Scientology's aired, when Scientology aired its ad, Mr. Peanut responded directly. Scientology doesn't take kindly to critics, and social media users were quick to point out their response to the tweet that Mr. Peanut better watch his back and probably his front lawn as Scientology is known to dispatch private investigators to hunt down dirt on detractors whom they label as SPs or suppressive persons, or in this case, suppressive peanuts, <laughs> in the process known as Scientology's fair game. A number of users tagged Leah Rimney, on, who hosts the, &E, the hit A&E docuseries Scientology The Aftermath, which documents the science, Church of Scientology's many physical, emotional, and financial abuses. Rumi responded by assuring commenters that indeed Scientology works to intimidate all its critics, and that probably includes Mr. Peanut. Often Scientology's critics like Rimney become the subject to widespread campaign of disinformation. Scientology has been known to dispatch investigators, harass friends and family of those they label as SPs and publish bizarre hate websites that claim to reveal the truth about those who've publicly split with the church. Honestly, the idea of the fair gaming, a cartoon peanut sounds far-fetched, right? It turns out it wasn't far-fetched, far off the mark within a few minutes, planners tweet, Prominently, uh, uh, planners tweet, prominent Scientologists, including some heavy, heavily involved in Scientology's Stand League, 
which operates as something of a digital rapid response operation where tweeting about planners was ex exhibiting anti-religious bigotry, which we covered in my last episode. Uh, fortunately for Mr. Peanut, Scientology has yet to purchase holesmrpeanut.com. So the operation to express uh, to expose a cartoon peanut has not reached its full potential. Ultimately, too, Mr. Peanut came out on top. The Planners brand took home the coveted Ad Week Brand Bowl MVP award for the brand most retweeted during Sunday's big game. Their peanut-based giveaway no doubt helped their help them achieve their social media stardom, but the Scientology criticism definitely didn't hurt. So, yeah, again, another one of those just stupid things that happened, but of course, we're covering all of the stupid things that happen. And let's see here. I'm going to hold that one back for an actual, um, I'm going to cover this in another thing. Um, yeah, that goes with that other thing that I was just talking about. Okay. So here's the last last article we're going to cover today. So the USC Scientology fake letter from professor to Disney probe open. This is from the underground bunker. Come on. It's from the underground bunker. Um, so this is Tony Ortega's um, actual blog. Like I said, I'm gonna have all that stuff linked down below. Um, he does some really great reporting on this stuff. So Scientology leader David Miscavige has some explaining to do to Reverend Dr. Chip Murray. And so we're gonna talk about this. Um, this is gonna be the last letter, uh, this is gonna be the last article I cover today. So we've told you that Scientology's grassroots effort calls the stands league is a fake but even we were stunned when we learned that scientology's astroturf attack on leah remney's a and e series has allegedly engaged in an outright fraud that has a major american university launching an investigation in december the stan league claimed that the doctor I mean, that the Reverend Dr. Cecil Chip Murray, the well-known former leader of the First African Methodist Episcopal Church in Los Angeles, who joined the University of Southern California as University Fellow in 2005, had written a letter to Disney CEO Bob Inger complaining about the one-sided nature of Remedy's television show about Scientology. Murray has been very friendly with Scientology in the past and in 2011 spoke the dedication of the new Scientology Ideal Org in Inglewood, California. Then they show a picture of him right there. <clears throat> so we weren't too surprised that in December Murray had seemed to help out Scientology with a letter complaining to Eager at Disney, which owns half of the A&E network that airs Remy's series. So here's the letter. It's on USC Stationary it says Mr. Eager has like all the things. It says I have recently become aware of a program being aired on A and E Networks, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, which is hateful towards several religious, several religions. This is Leah Remini Aftermath Reality Series. This is apparently its third season. A and E's recently recent programming persecutes American religions. Scientology, Jehovah Witnesses, and many other denominations, they say they are, quote unquote, looking into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
Their programming is one-sided and does not attempt to show the other side. And it says here is the full letter. By condoning the airing of the series, Disney makes itself a party to the violence resulting. I understand the Church of Scientology has had hundreds of, de of death of threats of death, violence, or vandalism incite, incited by the show, including their church of Twin Cities being set on fire, another church having a car driven purposely through their front windows, etc. Since the Jehovah's Witnesses episode was announced, there have been five of their kingdom halls burned down. I'm sure you are aware of the recent shooting at the synagogue in Pittsburgh and other search such incidents against churches around the United States. They dis that Disney would sponsor programs that incite hatred toward religions from my perspective is unconscionable. I have worked beside the Church of Scientology for over 25 years when they helped greatly to bring calm during the Rodney King riots with their tutoring and under and uh, tutoring of undeserved children work to get the anti-drug message out as well as teaching human rights, combating religious intolerance, stigmatiz stigmatization, discriminate, discrimination, incitement of violence, and violence against persons based on religion or belief is a matter of the highest importance as United Nations global policy. Do you have to wait until something worse happens to stop the hate mongering? It gives a quote from Ephesians. I don't really do religious quotes. It is time, sir, to act with courage and compassion as would the great Walt Disney. Many of his contemporaries. It keeps going on and on and on. Sincerely. And it signs his name. But an enterprising brand marketer in Arizona, Robin Anthel Thomas, was concerned that USC's Center of Religious and Civic Culture would allow its brand to be used in this manner, and she inquired about it with her public relations counterparts at the university. She informed Leah Remney that she received this stunning reply from USC. Ms. Thompson, I want to personally acknowledge your letter to President Austin which she has read and shared with me, she has asked me to respond on her behalf. We strive for accuracy and appropriateness in all of our university communications. Reverend Murray has stated that he has not authored, has not, uh, that he was not the author of that letter was addressed to Mr. Inger on the discontinued letterhead. He, uh, we are currently looking for the misuse of the university's trademark. Thank you for the sharing your concern with us. And then it signed this other person. The Center of Religious and Civic, Civic Culture put out their own statement saying that the Center and Dr. Murray have no, take no position on Disney's programming. And it gives another letter stating so. Uh, let's see here. Last week, Scientology doubled down on its deception by holding what is called an emergency press conference of the Los Angeles Faith Coalition, a group whose website the church owns, and hastily arranged event featuring only a couple of dozen attendees who's held across the street from the Disney Studios in Burbank so that Murray's fate letter could be presented to Disney in person. Jeffrey Augustine reported on the scene for us and since then has dug into the clergy members who make up the coalition. Okay, so it shows a rabbi, Stephen Jacobs, who is married to California State Controller Betty Yee in 2015 and was the subject of a 1993 book about, who, about how an affair he had with one of his congregation resulted in the woman being killed by her husband who hired a hitman to do the job. Uh, Reverend N.J. Skip LaRue Jr., uh, was not surprised as he was a long has long been a Scientology 
apologist <laughs> and asked what would Mickey Mouse do? Uh, Bishop Craig Warham, Warsham is a longtime student of Murray's. Uh, Shane Harris was a Warsham protege. Muhammad Akbar Khan, American Muslim strategist. Augustine has been reaching out to these attendees, asking them why they would make, why would they want to get involved in Scientology attacking a television show which has been exposing the church's controversies and abuses. And now, with the revel rev uh, revelation of the USC, the investigation of letters sent out in Murray's name, they may realize that they have even bigger credibility problems. And now that the cat is out of the bag, we can finally post the photo. What fun it, it was finally to meet Ron for the first time outside of the org. So this is a picture of Ron Miscavige and Tony Ortega. Ron Miscavige is David Miscavige's father who David likes to run his father's name through the mud and treat his dad like crap so yeah anyway i'm gonna link all of these articles down in the description box below um along with 20 uh, tony ortega's um blog um he puts out a lot of great material it's really good read um also i'm gonna be posting this so that any of my haters can leave me a comment I love it. It gives me a good laugh. Uh, but if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you saw anything in this video that you want to read up on, follow up on some of these uh, articles that I'm linking down in the description box. If you find anything on these articles that you want me to talk about in a future video, send it to me. I have no problem with it. Um, or if you find any more articles that you want me to talk about in a future video, send them to me. I will make another video like this in the future. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys, and ring that bell. And I will see you guys on the next one. That's all for now, guys. Bye.